Okay, hi guys. After a week's hiatus, I'm back. I'm still having tech issues, but I'm going to upload anyway. It's going to take a long time, but uh, yeah, uh, back to back to content as usual. I'll just uh, you know bear with it until the tech issues are resolved. So today we are talking about a video I promised about the Malta uh, Biret culture. I mentioned the location. I showed you the location on the satellite map in my last image. It's in. Uh, Siberia in Russia, it's in the Irkutsk Oblast, west, just west of Lake Baikal, uh, on the banks of the upper Ang Angara River. Uh, both both sites are. The one site overlooks the, the Angara River, and you'll see that. Uh, this image here, yeah, the, the, so it's a, a small uh, Siberian culture, but it's immensely important because they are uh, the very close relatives of the populations ancestral to various Siberians and Amerindians because they are ancestral North Eurasians, which we'll come on to. Uh, and they're also uh, the only example of the basal clade of our asterisk, which it was ancestral to the people who founded the Indus civilization, probably, it's been found there. Uh, so it was in India prior to the Aryans, it had already moved south to India. And it also uh, became R1A and R1B, uh, as we know, the major clades of uh, the Aryans, east and west. So uh, most Europeans, Indians, Iranians. Uh, and others beyond them. So, uh, this is an, uh, an image that I presume is the Ma'al Tarboy, a re reconstruction of him. Unfortunately, I couldn't find something better sourced, but I'm pretty sure this is him. Uh, and, yeah, so his, his remains were found near Ma'al uh, He's usually called, designated MA1. So, he was discovered in the 20s. Uh, he's been dated to 24,000 years before present. So, uh, yeah, I'll come back to the dating briefly, but this is the same period as the Salutrian, and they're interesting in com comparison to the Salutrian because they have less tool, advanced tool culture. Uh, they haven't adopted pressure flaking yet, which was definitive there, uh, but they seem to have more advanced uh, art and possibly a more developed religion. We can't say for sure, but there's certainly evidence that they have fully developed shamanism. This people group uh, were an, an offshoot of the genetic ancestors of Siberians and Amerindians, uh, and we'll come on to the similarity, presumed similarity between their religion and Siberian religion, and then I'm going to do another video, which I'll mention again, uh, where I talk about the similarity between Siberian shamanism, which is, is uh, dying out, but there are still examples and we know a little about it. The, the uh, pre-proto-Indo-European religion, their, their uh, form of shamanism which developed into a, a paganism which then had various reforms uh, in, its, in its various offshoots, various nations that were offshoots of the Indo-European peoples. This lady here uh, is a lady from Archaeum, so she is a relative of the Yamnaya people. I'm using her here as an example of ancient North uh, Eurasians. And then moving on from her, uh, this person, uh, the Malta boy, the Malta Biret people, were closely related to the Amnaya and the Botai. Uh, the Botai are even closer related to uh, ancestral North Eurasians, as determined by Sungir, which is a site just before this culture, which I'll come to later. Uh, they're even closer than Yamnaya, and therefore closer than... Uh, Amerindians, because Amerindians and Yamnaya, the ancestors of Europeans and Indians and Iranians, each had about 50%. So we have a little less, but our, our ancestors uh, had the same amount of ancient North Eurasian heritage as Amerindians and Siberians tend to. So Botai, uh, Bot Botai here's, this, here's an image of the Sungir man and an image of some Sungir dwellings, these ones I've been showing. So this, this illustrates uh, what the Botai and the Botai uh, households might have looked like. Uh, and the, the Botai people lived in Kazakhstan. And the Botai people had horses, which were initially thought to be wild and hunted, but uh, the evidence has shown that uh, they used mare's milk and uh, various other uh, horse products, which suggest that they had already domesticated the horse. Uh, and this, this horse I show here, Przewalski's horse, it's largely derived from that horse, from the Botai horse, whether the wild or the domestic uh, branch. And the Botai horse seems to have contributed 2.7% uh, of the modern ancestry of horses. So it has been interbred with the ancestors of modern horses, but it's not their main ancestor. These people were obviously some of the first to domesticate horses, though they were domesticated elsewhere, seemingly. But 
the Ugric, the Ugric word for horse, lox, uh, is thought to have been borrowed from the language of the Botai. So it may have been a language isolate, it's not known to be related to any languages, but it's, it's thought to have had exchange with the Ugric, the Finno Ugric languages. So these are all peoples of the Eurasian steppe, Central Asian peoples, and people who spread out from Central Asians. That's Aryans and Amerindians. So, as I said, the Native Americans, the Kets, the Mansi, and the Salkup are all cr close relatives of this um, MA1, the Maltaboy. And the Kets, I'll show a Kets shaman uh, later, and the uh, Mansi will come on to when I do another video talking about the shamanism uh, and pre proto Aryan religion, pre European religion. So, the Maltaboy is the only example of this uh, R asterisk, the basal R clade. Therefore, he's uh, the closest thing we have to the ancestor of all, all R carriers uh, and was ancestral to both the people who seem to have founded the Indus civilization and to the Aryans, the Indo Europeans. And he also belonged to a deep rooted clade of MTDNAU. So, MTDNAU is a common uh, West Eurasian. DNA group, which is interesting again, we'll come to it uh, later. As well as all of this, he was also close to the ancient North Siberians, which again is why he's close to the, the people like the kids in the Mansi, and the uh, Tianyang man, who is an ancient Chinese example. But again, the Chinese are, they have heritage from elsewhere. Uh, so the Malta built semi-subterranean semi houses, which was common in various peoples. The Eskimo uh, do it with the igloos, and the Scandinavians used to do it uh, to conserve heat. Obviously, that's essential living out in Siberia, where the weather is very harsh. Yeah, so the they ha they houses were constructed. You can see some examples here. The first is an example of a, a large structure, or what's left of it. And the second is an example of what one of the smaller smaller huts, almost like a more permanent form of a yurt, uh, would look like. Uh, they constructed them from large animal bones, mammoth bones to be precise, and they used uh, reindeer antlers covered with furs, skins, uh, to construct roofs over their dwellings to keep them cosy from the uh, weather. Malta, uh, it's an early Upper Paleolithic site, like I was saying, it's the same time as the Salutrians going on over west that I talked about earlier, and Another interesting thing is that uh, it is part of what's called the Gravettian culture. Uh, but as I may mention again, these people, although they have a similar tool culture uh, to the Gravettian, which preceded the Salutrian, and they're still in that Gravettian period in terms of tool making, uh, they're not related to the Gravettian people. They're a totally separate uh, groups. So it's cultural diffusion between the two groups between the group that stretches across Europe and this group out in, in Central Asia and Siberia. Uh, so the, the interesting thing is that they're still flint flaking, they're not pressure flaking like the Salutrians I showed you, uh, so they're using a more t primitive tool method. They don't have composite tools at the site, which uh, are already being used elsewhere, uh, and they lack a few uh, notable uh, tools and features of tools, so something called screblos, which are large side scrapers, uh, they're for cleaning uh, skins and things. Pebble cores, wedge-shaped cores, burins, and again the composite tools.